In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Back to your program, Treasures. We are commenting on the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4. We finished the story of the Samaritan woman. She left to call all the Samaritan people to come and see the Lord Christ. And the disciples came and they offered food for the Lord and he gave them another lesson of how to focus on the harvest, on the service, on saving souls. That's the real food of spiritual people. That's the will of God, not just to spend time eating and drinking the usual food and drink. We will comment on the verse 38. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. So Christ is telling his disciples that the prophets started to push people for many generations to expect Christ, the coming Savior. But now it's your time, the disciples, to point at Christ, the Savior, and to teach the all people everywhere the truth. God came to save man. He is Christ, the Son of God. He is the only Savior. And we need to believe in Him. We need to follow Him. So He said, I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. You will start your part now. Many people labored much. Many prophets were killed because of their witness. Now it's your time to witness for the same truth but expect also to suffer like the prophets. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. So many of the Samaritan women came and they enjoyed his sermon. They enjoyed sitting with him. And because of the testimony given by the Samaritan woman, they loved him. They expected to, to love him. So... They wanted to know more and more. He told me all that I ever did. She kept saying this. He told me all what I have did. So as confessing to everyone. And this witness was quite enough for many people to believe in him. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days, which is very much unexpected because... The Samaritan city is not in good terms with the Jew people. But Christ spent two days with his disciples among these people. And many more believed because of his own word. So they started to believe because of her word. Now after sitting with him, spending two days, they started to believe more because of his word. That's very important message because... You, being a servant, will push somebody to know Christ. He may follow Christ because of you. But this is the beginning. He, have to, he has to have a personal relationship. He has to believe in Christ by himself, to enjoy the word of God by himself. So they started to know Christ through the Samaritan. They now love him because of his word. When the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Look to this, the Samaritan people accepted Christ before the Jew people. And that's important because Christ came for all nations, all people. And the Samaritan, you know, knew him before the Jew people because they felt inferior and they were humble enough to receive the message and they enjoyed his stay. So don't look down to anyone because the unexpected people may run towards God much more than the common believers or the religious people. Now after the two days, he departed from there and went to Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. 
his own country in the Galilee area because he lived his childhood in Nadara and then he preached the word of God in Capernaum and you know Bethsaida, these areas in Galilee but in his own country because people could never imagine that the carpenter who lived among them is the son of God, is the Messiah. So many people were, you know, stumbled by this. They couldn't imagine that Jesus, the well-known carpenter, is the Messiah. So he went to Judea because in Judea they never knew him. So they will look up to him because of his miracles, his teaching. They may know him more. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him having seen all the things he did in Jerusalem at the feast, for they also had gone to the feast. So look to this. He went to Judea. And in Judea, in Jerusalem, people, you know, glorified him in a way. So the people visiting Jerusalem from the Galilee area started to respect him more because the Judean people loved him and praised him. So his people of his own country started to look up to him because he is now well known everywhere. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee where he had made the water, water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Cana of Galilee is very nearby Capernaum. So in Cana where he had done his miracle of the wedding, um, there was a nobleman coming to him from Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son. So according to, to the reputation happened, everyone is saying that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the one who is doing miracles everywhere. He can heal any sickness. So this nobleman came to him because he heard that he came back from Judea, asking him for the life of his son. For he was at the point of death. The son of the nobleman was about to die. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. So Christ was not very happy that people just seek miracles. They don't want to understand. They don't want the teaching. They need only the signs, the wonders. But some of them, because of the wonders and the signs, believe. So he will do the signs and wonders. But you know, the wonders and signs are not enough for the belief. In order to believe, you have to expect that sometimes wonders are not there. But Christ is always there. Christ is God, even if he will not do any wonder, but he is the Savior. He came to give us the miracle of the new life, which is much more important than any miracle of healing or any miracle of changing things around. The noble man said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. So this noble man was very anxious because, you know, his son is going to die. Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the word to this because it was new for them that Christ is making a miracle, you know, um, not in, in, in the location of the need, but far away from the location. His word will be powerful enough to make the miracles many miles away. That was new for them because they knew that he can touch people, he can say word to the sick people in order to heal them. But this wasn't, you know, uh, usual. But this noble man believed that with this sentence, his son far away will be healed. And according to this order, he went back to his house to see the child. Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he went his way and as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him saying, your son lives. So before reaching his home, the servants came to him saying, 
be happy enough, your son lived already and uh, the miracle happened. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. This noble man asked them what was exactly the hour happened when the miracle occurred. They said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, uh, the fever left him. So on the exact hour he was standing before Christ, asking for the miracle. In this hour, in this minute, the miracle happened in Capernaum, which, you know, magnified the miracle. Everyone could see the truth now. Christ is the Pantocrator. Christ can do anything, anywhere, anytime. And his power is not like any power of any prophet before. That's very new for human nature. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed in his whole household. So this nobleman believed in him because of this miracle. And all his family believed in Christ. So although in Galilee part, many people couldn't follow Christ because he was just the carpenter, the old carpenter of their city. But many other people could believe him because of the miracles happened. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. He had done many, many miracles. But you know, major miracles happened in Galilee part. But the first one, what happened in Cana of Galilee, changing water into wine. And the second major miracle happened, the life of the son of this noble man. But you know for sure, Christ had done many miracles in Judea and in Galilee. But you know, for the, the big miracles well known by everyone, that was the first one in chapter 2 of Cana of Galilee, and now in chapter 4, the life or the healing of the son of the noble man. So again, let me revise what happened in the Gospel of St. John. In the first chapter, John was focusing on the Logos, the nature of Christ. He is the light, the true light, the Son of God, the Lamb of God. And he started to tell everyone, come and see. And the disciples started to say the same, come and see God incarnate. Um, on the second chapter, we face the first big miracle of the wedding of Cana, Galilee, and the changing from water into wine, and the disciples started to believe in him as the real Messiah. On the third chapter, we were in the dialogue between Nicodemus and the Lord, and our Lord Jesus Christ revealed the secret of being the Son of God, the Son of Man, the real Savior of humanity, and the one who should die for the redemption of everyone, and also the sacrament of the holy baptism in order to be born again from heaven and to be the children of God. Also, um, in chapter 3, we heard the testimony of John the Baptist. He witnessed to Christ as the bridegroom, as the uh, Son of God. He is from heaven, John the Baptist just from earth, although he was speaking the truth and he witnessed to Christ, but he considered himself like a slave to the Master God. And he said about himself, he is like a friend of the bridegroom and he's so happy to hear his voice and his mission was fulfilled. Chapter 4, we have the story of the Samaritan woman. And in this story, we could see Christ, um, the kind teacher who is helping her to reveal the confession and to to come closer to know him more and more, to, uh, to answer her questions about where to worship and how to worship. And he spoke about the living water, the Holy Spirit, the new life. This Samaritan woman, woman could feel the change in her heart. She loved him so much. She started to preach his name. She went 
to her uh, city and brought all the men of the city in order to see Christ by their eyes. He stayed for two days so the Samaritan people could say that this is the Son of God, this is the real Messiah, now we believe in him. Although the disciples were astonished because they never expected that the Samaritan people will love him more than the Jew people. On the last part of the of chapter 4, we have the miracle of the son of the noble man. This noble man came from Capernaum asking Christ to come with him to save his son. But because Christ uh, is God, he made it this way, he said it this way, your son lives. And with his word, his son far away got the new life, the, left, the fever left him. In the exact minute, the Lord said it when he was in Cana of Galilee. When the nobleman went home, he found out that his son lived because of the word of God. So he believed in Christ and all his family uh, believed in Christ. So in the four chapters, now the, the image of Christ is well known. Christ is not only a man but real God. Christ is the Logos incarnate. He became to, came man, to be man, saving everyone. He is the law giver. He gave the law to Moses. Now he's completing the law in himself. He is the real savior. He should be crucified for the redemption of everyone. He is the Lamb of God. He made his disciples to preach his name. He will give the human nature the new life by holy baptism. And he is inviting everyone to come to enter his kingdom of heaven. He can meet anyone, the high ruler of Jew people like Nicodemus and the very low people like the Samaritan woman. Everyone invited to know the real God. Glory to God. Amen.